This program is brought to you by the City of Oceanside. The following program does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or policies of the City of Oceanside, its elected officials, KOCT, its board of directors, or staff. I'm CJ Demento, your local librarian from the Oceanside Public Library and city staff for the Oceanside Arts Commission. I am really excited to welcome you to the December edition of Oceanside Spectrum. First, we have Jody Diamond, CEO of Boys and Girls Club of Oceanside, celebrating seven decades of youth development in the community. Tanya Danielli, Executive Director of the Ivy Ranch Park Association, is here and they are also celebrating a great milestone, 40 years of bringing interaction and enjoyment with their ranch and horses. And the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce's Rising Star program uh, will be joined by Victoria Carlberg and Scott Ashton to talk about that. And Dr. Annie Peterson, founder and president of the Association for Human Animal Bond Studies, is here to tell us about their engaging web series Animal Bond Academy. So stay tuned because Oceanside Spectrum starts now. So Jody Diamond with the Boys and Girls Club is here and celebrating a really incredible milestone providing great futures for local youth. Hello, welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Big milestone. Huge. 70. 70. 70 years, you guys are 70 years old. It's amazing, seven wow. decades. Yeah, incredible. And doing so much good work for our youth here in Oceanside. And so tell us about that. What, you know, what has been, what does that 70 years look like from, from your perspective? You know, it's amazing that we've had seven decades yeah. of serving youth in our local community. Yeah. Um, in, we typically serve about 4,200 youth a year. Okay. Pre-COVID, of course, COVID yeah. changed a lot. Uh, we were still grateful to be able to serve uh, 2,700 youth during COVID, wow. which was a huge milestone as well, given mm -hmm. that the whole world shut down. Yeah. Um, we have morphed, obviously, in that seven decades yeah. from what people used to know as the boys club, which was you know, sports and fitness and recreation based. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we've morphed over these 70 years into providing a kaleidoscope of opportunities for youth to find their passion. Mm -hmm. And that's really the magic that happens at the Boys and Girls Club, mm -hmm. because how do you know what you want to do yeah. if you've never done it or you've never been exposed? So yeah. that's really what we do is we provide this opportunities for our youth to see what they do mm -hmm. and what they don't like because mm -hmm. that's equally as important to know yeah. what you don't want to do when you grow up. Yeah. Um, but it, by providing all mm -hmm. of these opportunities for them to see their passions and, and understand what they want to do as they yeah. age, um, that's the, the gift that we're able to give them. That's really magical work that you're doing, really magical work. Right? Yeah, we love what we do. We're, we're very lucky in that, in that regard. Yeah, and so you have your town site location, right, which is your main location. Lots of amazing um, things that you have there in that, in that location, but you're also out in the community. So speak to that, sort of what the, the picture of Boys and Girls Club looks like as far as your location. Sure, I'd love to. Yeah. Uh, so we have our town site clubhouse. Um, that's our, right over by Brook Street Pool. Everyone knows yeah. where it is. It's been there for a number of years. I mean, yeah. again, we've been in existence since 1952. Uh, but we also serve on the school campuses. So we're um, in four Oceanside Unified School Districts uh, schools, as well as okay. one uh, Vista Unified School District okay. uh, school, which provides a sports academy. So we're able to really begin to um, go to where the youth are and provide those mm -hmm. critical services that they right. need. Uh, in addition, uh, I was on a couple years ago and talked about our Center for Innovation that we were able yeah. to build upon our town site the 2,800 square foot addition that includes a culinary arts teaching kitchen, a performing arts center, and a stream lab. And that really was so critical during COVID because as we all know, when the world shut down, we also yeah. had to physically close for a, a short time. Right, we were up right. and running within days, uh, providing virtual programming. Yeah. And we were also able to reach out to all of our youth 
Yeah. We wanted to make sure that they knew that we were there even though we couldn't physically be there. Mm -hmm. Tremendously dedicated staff. And what Absolutely. we heard was really heartbreaking, that mm. kids were hungry. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, again, amazing staff came back. We swung into action. And on May 4th of 2020, we opened our emergency food program. Okay. And that provided and distributed over 55,000 free home-cooked, nutritious meals curbside to any youth under 18. We're really proud that we were able to step up and, and assist our community and especially our kids during that time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now as you're, we're sort of getting past that period of, of being reopening, what are you seeing? Like what, what, what are you providing for the kids and the, and the community and, and what sort of programs are, are you implementing now as sure. we're reopening? Yeah. Well, I, I would like to point out that Back in June of 2020, we yeah. were the only youth development organization in North County that opened our doors wow. and remained open uh, for 15 months from yeah. 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., providing that support. Yeah. And although we weren't able to serve the numbers that we normally do, obviously due, due to the physical limitations of, uh, at that time, right. uh, we're really proud that we were able to at least be open and helping our families get back to work our, our youth get back to some sense of normalcy. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a tremendous need now, just mm -hmm. a tremendous need. As anyone could imagine, right. as adults, we struggled through yeah. COVID and are still struggling through COVID. However, for our youth, that was even more magnified, right. you know, especially with the demographics and populations that we serve. Okay. We began to see a greater academic slide okay. with our youth, and so we're trying very, you know, hard now, not only to provide the support academically, mm -hmm. that is very important, but we all know that the mental health aspect, yeah. we have got to support these youth in yeah. ways that we may never have been able to support them before. Absolutely. And we're seeing that. I mean, as we know, Oceanside has tremendous heroes and mm -hmm. our sponsors and our donors have just stepped up tremendously. We couldn't do this work yeah. without them. Yeah. and our kids need us. And so how can people be a donor or a sponsor or find out what you're doing and support it? Tell us how they can I'm do that. I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> uh, being that we're going into the giving season, we yeah. actually have our Giving Tuesday, uh, which is uh, November 30th this year. Okay. You know, it's a national day of giving. Uh, we have a $5,000 anonymous match, so you can mm -hmm. double your, your gift by donating to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Oceanside. Um, and I'm sure that you'll have all the information on the bottom of it's the screen, there. but if it's not, there. contact us and we'll let you know how uh, you can, uh, you can support help. our youth. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jody, for being here. Love hearing what you guys are up to over at the Boys and Girls Club. Thank you, my pleasure. We'll be right back with our next guest. Hello, you may know me from KOCT's new program, Mo's K-Pop Page. I'm an influencer, digital creator, and musician. I wanted to become a friend of KOCT to share new content of culture, fashion, and music with people of the community. I'm excited to introduce and invite more KOCT viewers, artists, musicians, and creators like me, not only to watch, but participate in community productions of all kinds. Oceanside is a diverse community where we all work together and create more opportunities in art, music, and entertainment. I'm happy to be a part of a community channel that offers a chance for new filmmakers to become noticed through the community calendar, scheduled television programming, and online streaming. I'm looking forward to an exciting new year, and I hope you will join us here as friends of KOCT. Go to koct.org today and become a friend. Thank you. Kamsamnida. Welcome back. Tanya Danielli is with us, and she is with a very cool organization here in Oceanside, the Ivy Ranch Park Association. Yes. Yes, so thank you. Absolutely, I appreciate being here. And I'm excited to learn more about your association. I do know that it has a long history yes. here in Oceanside. Um, the original ranch house is from 1889. Mm -hmm. 
right when the city was being incorporated. Yes. Just about. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the, the history of, of your location and your association. Sure. So like you said, the ranch yeah. house is old yeah. um, and we operate out of that ranch house still, which is amazing. So we have a care center that is a lot like Boys and Girls Club, but for special okay. needs. And we see children from the surrounding school districts. So Oceanside, Carlsbad, Vista, San Marcos, Bonsall, wow. Fallbrook, and Camp Pendleton. Yeah. So we have before and after school programming, and then during summertime and holidays, all the kids are there. So the ranch yeah. house, uh, 1889, is still utilized, and, uh -huh. and God bless Otis Ivy, who actually owned that ranch and yeah. all that space. Um, so not only the ranch house, but we have two outbuildings on the facility as well. So um, the 1889 ranch house, a 1920s barn, mm -hmm. and a 1940s caretaker's house. So the property itself is about 12 acres large. Yeah. Um, we've got the care center, the barn house, the caretaker's house, and then we have two large barns that um, host our 24 horses that are in programming. So we also have a community garden. So the yeah. space is well loved and utilized and on the property is also Canine Companions for Independence and Casa de Amparo. So the city of Oceanside owns the property and we three nonprofits function independently, but each utilize a long-term lease to be there mm -hmm. and offer services back to the community. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Um, so you have an equestrian center, you yes. have grounds, um, tell us a little bit more about, about your campus and how it's used, sure. the type of programming that you're offering on, on campus. So aside from our care programming, yeah. which is up at the ranch house, right. basically what happened is we had a group of parents that came together mm -hmm. and they wanted a space to offer both children with special needs and typically developing children care programs. Okay. So your basic daycare and preschool. And back in the day, which is now 40 years ago, we're celebrating our 40th anniversary. Congratulations. Um, thank you. <laughs> the integration was not typical. Right. It, it was, that was when we called um, handicapped people handicapped or retarded. Obviously that has changed now and the integration and people understanding that side by side has changed. Mm -hmm. So we had the care center where all the kids came and then we started providing in-home programming as well. So if you think about the children who socially cannot be in certain situations or medically fragile, mm -hmm. we started sending care providers to the home to give parents and care providers a break. Right. So we blossom from just the on-site care programming to in-home. And then we still had all of these children. And what do you do with children when you have them full time? You figure out recreationally what you can do. Yeah. So we've been involved with everything from swimming, diving, kayaking, out in the community, camping. But the grounds, obviously being a ranch, it made mm -hmm. sense to have horses. So in 2003, um, the equestrian program we have now was introduced mm -hmm. and we had a donated horse and two brave um, children and their families mm -hmm. from our care center volunteer to help launch that program. So that's what's there now. We've got the on-site, the in-home, um, the equestrian center, and we also have a community garden. And that garden we inherited from the Mission San Luis Rey wow. when they were building their Sarah Center. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of evolved, um, but that's how we utilize our space. And it's very active out there. We literally have yeah. programming going seven days a week. Incredible. Yeah. And that takes a lot of people yes, it does. to make that happen. Yes, it does. Right? Yes. How many people does it take to make that happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Um, Fortunately, we are well supported by volunteers, and that is a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, people come to us to not only help with the children, but learn about horses and to right. be with the horses. So it does not matter if you've had experience with them or not. Um, if you are into the warm fuzzies of four-leggeds, then you have an <laughs> opportunity to come out and meet our horses awesome. and work with them. So yes, as far as how many people does it take, um, there's over 50 employees, but it takes over 800 volunteers 800 a year volunteers. to run programming. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's amazing. People show up. Um, they are so giving and so willing and it is such a lovely environment because people are at their best doing for others yeah. so it really just 
continues um, to grow and prosper because of the investment people make, okay. whether it be their time, their talent, um, the financial investment, the treasure. Um, so Absolutely. 40 years, a lot of social service clubs, organizations, yeah. foundations been mm -hmm. actively involved out there. And towards the end of the year, it's a great time to be thinking about that, to yeah, be that's giving to, to organizations that are doing all of this work like you are. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, what comes around goes around. And I truly believe that, you know, if you invest that time in people, um, it does come back to you. Yeah. And when you do donate, um, it's amazing how the provisions come back to you and, and that you're continually blessed with that. So you put yeah. it out there and we have found that we've got a lot of kind people that help support and make us make us go. And where is it out there? So if people want to find out more and be involved, where do you want it to go? So um, the website, the, the first place they can go is ivyranch.com and it's I, V as in Victor, E-Y, because it's a proper name, yeah. ivyranch.com. Great. And then the address is actually 110 Rancho del Oro. Great. So what's kind of funny about that is people locally have driven by us a million times yeah. and a lot of times don't know that we're there. But we are literally right across from the Mission San Luis Rey. Okay. We have a beautiful 12 acre piece of property that is sandwiched between um, the 76 Expressway and Mission Avenue. Mm -hmm. So that whole 12 acres that is tucked behind a wall, that's us. I love it. Yes. I love it. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing about your organization Thank today. You. And, and have a great rest of your year. You as well. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're watching 40 years of KOCT television, the Oceanside Channel. Welcome back. We have Scott Ashton and Victoria Carlberg with the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce. Scott is CEO and Victoria is Workforce Development Coordinator. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, glad Thanks. to have you guys here with the Thanks. Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Um, it's an important organization in our community. It has a great mission, right? It does advocacy, um, working to support our local businesses. And what an important time to support our local businesses, right? Last year and a half. Scott, what, what's it been like? What, what have you seen? Yeah, so actually this year is the Chamber's 125th anniversary, so we've been wow. at it for a while. Yeah. And I would say in the last couple of years, um, we've probably been more relevant and needed um, by our business community than, than ever yeah. before. Mm -hmm. So it's... Um, it's been a, a tough ride uh, yeah. for the business community, but we've been fortunate to be in the position to um, really be able to help and provide a, a lot of resources for our businesses. And I think mm -hmm. the biggest thing they, they've needed is, is a voice, and somebody to speak on their behalf, and that's uh, yeah. a role that we've gladly taken on. Right, and speak um, on behalf of a number of challenges they might have. I mean, financially, but also mm -hmm. staffing and all of those other things that go along with, with the business world, right? Yeah, so yeah. As, as we've moved um, out of COVID, not that we're out of it, but yeah. you know, as we've moved forward and businesses got, um, were reopened, um, they found new challenges, and that was the, the staffing. And uh, you know, while I think our economic recovery has really progressed well, yeah. I think it's been dampened um, to some extent by mm -hmm. just the staffing issues because we've right. we've talked with businesses that haven't been able to operate at full capacity in terms of hours um, just because the, the staffing isn't there. Yeah. Um, I think that is starting to resolve itself a little bit, uh, um, at least in some of the businesses that I've been talking with. Great. That's good news. Yeah. Um, you guys are doing a lot of workforce development activity, right? Tell us about the Rising Star program that you're just implementing just starting this month. Tell us about that. We are. That's right, yeah. CJ. So out of, really out of the call to action for everything that's been going on, this program, Workforce Development, mm -hmm. was developed uh, at the chamber in this position that I'm in now. And then just seemed like a logical conclusion to bring the Rising Star program to Oceanside. Mm -hmm. A couple of our local chambers of commerce do have the program. Um, so we've brought it to Oceanside starting in November, and we're making it our own. Um, it honors a high school senior at uh, one of our Oceanside high schools uh, for just not necessarily being, um, you know, they're not the valedictorian. They could be, but it's yeah. a student who's really, yeah. uh, who's gone through a lot 
and, and their accomplishments are being honored and recognized, and we are seeing them as rising stars shining in, in our Oceanside sky, so it's really remarkable. So kids that have them. faced adversity. That's right. And you are honoring them, and you're doing it monthly here, and, right. and working to support students with their development and That's their right. success um, when they enter the workforce. Absolutely, I think they've yeah. been through so much through this pandemic and it's continued mm. and yeah. a lot of things have really been stymied for them. Their social development, obviously if they were exploring mm. a career, everything kind of stopped and yes. we're trying to help get them back on track. And so yeah. this is really one way to do that with this recognition program mm. for them and right. everyone um, hears their story and it's been very, so far, so uplifting to hear their stories and, and just be part of that. Um, um, that village to encourage them along the rest of their journey yeah. post high school. It's so important that we support our local um, students. Mm -hmm. It's so important. I'm so glad that you're doing that. Uh, so Scott, um, tell us a little bit, bit about your podcast because I want folks to know about that too. <laughs> you're doing things for for high school seniors. You're you're you know you have an amazing podcast that you're that you're doing right now too. Yeah. So the we had. Um, we had wanted to do a podcast and we were, we were just trying to figure out the logistics of yeah. the type of equipment we would need to get for our office. And, and then COVID happened mm -hmm. and Zoom happened along with that. And it became evident that Zoom would be actually a great tool for launching our podcasts. Yeah. Um, so we did that last fall. Um, we did our first couple episodes, I think around uh, last September. And it was right around election time. The chamber had just endorsed candidates. So we uh, did our uh, first couple podcast interviews with our, our city council candidates mm -hmm. that we endorsed. And then we did a project with um, Cal State San Marcos, uh, their senior experience. And so we had a group of, um, of senior business students helping us in, uh, in developing uh, and furthering along our podcast. And they came back with some great tools for us and some great ideas that we implemented right around the beginning of this year. And if you look at the earliest of our podcast episodes versus what you see now, it, it's night and day because of the help that those students have um, had provided us. Yeah, our amazing local students, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Yep. Uh, so if people want to learn more, about the chamber of the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce and the work that you're doing in supporting our students and businesses, where do you want them to go? They should probably go to the Rising Star uh, web page on okay. our website. Would that be the best place, Scott? Yeah, for the yeah. Rising Star program or in the podcast or just to be able to link to anything else that we're doing, just OceansideChamber.com. OceansideChamber, and that's running across the bottom right yes. now. <laughs> yeah. So great. Well, thank you guys so much for being here from the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce. Thanks Thank for having us. us. Appreciate it. And we will be right back with our next guest. Located hillside on Mesa Drive in Oceanside, Buddy Todd Park is known for its beautiful ocean breezes, established trees, and plenty of space. Developed nearly a century ago in 1929, it is Oceanside's oldest park. Originally named Parnassus Circle, it was later renamed in 1946 for John Buddy Todd, the first Oceanside resident to pass in World War II. Buddy Todd Park offers 19 acres of panoramic views, a multi-purpose field, picnic areas, restroom facilities, children's playgrounds, and beautiful walking paths. Buddy Todd Park is open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Visit today. Welcome back. Dr. Annie Peterson, President and CEO of the Association for Human Animal Bond Studies, is here. It's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> but I got it. Did I get you it right? Did. It was perfect. Okay, good. And and it's a it's a big deal, right? Right. right. So tell us like um, tell us about the association. Sure, it's a big name for for a lot of big things yeah. that we that we do. Yeah. Um, so the Association for Human Animal Bond Studies uh, started in 2012. That's when we became okay. a 501c3. Okay. And we started mainly doing research on the human animal bond, mm -hmm. incorporating animals into classrooms to oh, see if that helped to reduce stress for children. Um, received a couple really nice grants in order to do that. Yeah. Uh, since then, we have branched out 
and started doing animal assisted interventions, animal assisted therapy, mm. bringing animals to people, mainly people who have suffered traumatic events. Mm. So we bring animals to them, it's part of their therapy and they're just able to relax in a way with an animal that they're not necessarily able to do with people. And then in the last couple of years, <laughs> when all the, the COVID shenanigans <laughs> started, we started uh, doing some short videos called Animal Bond Academy. And that became because of COVID. Right. We were not able to do in-person animal assisted therapies anymore in-person uh, research with children in the classroom and animals. Right. But there are so many groups and so many people who are working with animals and all of their education programs ended too. Mm -hmm. And these were their livelihoods and animals still needed to eat. <laughs> and so they still needed income in order to help support the lives that they were supporting. So my husband and I, who've been in the animal biz for a couple decades now, um, reached out to some friends who needed a little extra support. So we started doing videos with them, yeah. and then it's just grown and grown and grown, and I'm finding out more and more organizations every day. Wow, so, so you support them by helping them to fundraise, and you're talking about Correct. like sanctuaries and... Correct, yeah. yeah. So if, for example, there's one sanctuary called Libby Lou Safe Haven, yeah. which is in uh, Boulevard, so part of San Diego County, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they rescue cows from the meat and dairy industry. Okay. And so these are animals that are living on a sanctuary in on their, their property in their home, and they are a 501c3 as well. And so we were able to uh, make a couple of videos, post them on YouTube, and now KOCT, and, <laughs> um, and get more information out about what they do. Um, also, nonprofit goat yoga organizations in, in um, North San Diego County, uh, they needed support as well, so we were able to feature them on a couple of Animal Bond Academy videos too. So really a big range of animal support organizations absolutely. that you are in turn supporting. Right, right. absolutely. So um, so when if people are looking to support mm -hmm. Animal Bond Academy videos, animal assisted yeah. interventions, animal assisted therapies, they can always donate to Association for Human Animal Bond Studies. It is a nonprofit organization getting toward the end of the year, so those nice little tax write-offs. So um, they can support us, but then they're also supporting all these other organizations. And yeah. we're able to make those videos and get the information out about people and their animals and just their their heart work. Mm -hmm. This is what they do, and they're they're literally saving lives. And so we want to we want to highlight them. Yeah, and you're helping to spread that word about Absolutely. the good work that they're doing. So folks can um, reach you at web, what website? So another big one for <laughs> a big organization. So it's animalbondstudies.org. Okay. And you can see Animal Bond Academy videos there, make donations on the website. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, all the wonderful social media outlets. And be able to view you on KOCT coming up shortly. <gasps> yes, <so exciting. laughs> great news, great news and great work that you're doing. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Such a pleasure to meet you. Oh, it was great meeting you too, thanks. Thank you. And thank you for watching this edition of Oceanside Spectrum with these incredible community assets that are seeking to move our community into a brighter 2022 for people and animals. Yay! <laughs> if you would like to be a guest on the show, please visit koct.org slash spectrum to find out details on how your nonprofit can be a part of the show. Stay up to date with all things North County by visiting koct.org. Thank you and take good care.